पता नहीं है Don't dump it in there yet, man. We gotta talk about it for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he still ain't did his old, the old conversion. What conversion? Oh, this one probably don't get it, does it? That little thing that, that jig jags in there to... Oh, you're talking about the agitator. Yeah, where's that? Th this machine doesn't have one. Here's the agitator. Oh, oh snap. Yeah. Huh. Ain't funny grip. <laughs> What's up, my old? Oh, Who is Lord. It? Watch that seed. Setting up that camera to record this part of. Say what? I was saying I could hold it while you talk. Oh what? Camera. You'll learn it when I do my videos. It's all on the fly. I mean, it ain't. I don't rehearse nothing. I just grab the camera and say, "Hey, it's Pete with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day today." And these are two of my buddies right here, Mr. Mike and Mr. Giovanni. They're from up in Virginia Beach, and uh, they're Academy people. And you know, uh, to tell you the truth, I could care less if they're in academy. These, these guys are my buddies, they're my friends. They spent time to come down here and hang out with me and work in my yard. Uh, it's really cool to get to know new people and meet new people and kind of build that relationship. So uh, we're gonna get out here in the yard and we're gonna plug it, we're gonna fertilize it, we're gonna seed it, we're gonna do all kind of cool things. And uh, we're just gonna have a good time. We're gonna mark them irrigation heads. We're try, gonna mark irrigation heads. Try not to mess up. We're gonna try not to mess up. And, but mainly thing we're gonna do is get your dirt right. <laughs> yeah. Get your dirt right. And you look, we look like a GCI rainbow. Okay, so I got, uh, hang on. Uh? Where do we go? Uh? <laughs> he ain't gonna cut that part out. I done got, got him too many times, he ain't gonna cut this part out. Hey, my name's Mike with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day. Hey, this is Gio with uh, GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day. Oh, what's it? He just right, he busted your go. butt. Busted your butt. All right, so in your you big crap, wrong one, hang on. All right, so I'm right now. Now I had a. Uh, Man, I can't tell you how many folks have asked me about t-shirts and I'm thankful for that. Thank you so much. And so I got a bunch of different colors. I got this pink one, that kind of blue, this blue, and this gray. And so your job in the comments is tell me what fa what's your favorite color. It's got that on the front. It's got that on the back. Bella Canvas, I don't know if you know what they are, but man, they are crazy soft t-shirts. How do they feel? Soft as a baby's butt. Soft as a baby's butt. I like I, that. I agree. We'll go with that. Yeah. I'm not going to dump fertilizer on my... Uh-uh. That's a good point. I'm talk glad about, you said about, that, Mike. Background. Yeah. Okay, so Mr. Mike was talking about my background. Why don't I just pour the machine... Or pull the machine in the yard and put my fertilizer in? Here's why I don't do that. Okay? I might screw up and spill a pile of fertilizer in my grass. And when I do that, it's going to burn it because it's too much... NPK in one spot at one time and it'll burn the yard. Or I may leave my hopper open by mistake. Done that before. And when I pour my fertilizer in, it goes right on my grass. And I have actually been talking to somebody while the fertilizer is dumping out and I had no clue. So I made it a conscious effort. I always load off of my grass. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Cool. So aeration and seeding is basically you take a machine and you're going to core aerate the yard, remove a lot of little, uh, I call them dog turds, a little bit of turds out of the yard to be thousands of little tiny holes in the yard. Okay, and what that's going to do is when it rains or you water, that water's going straight down to the root system, oxygen straight down to the root system, and it also creates a little tiny pocket for my grass seed to sit in. So whenever I do an aeration and seeding job, I always use a starter fertilizer because we're actually using a fertilizer to start that new growth. And in this case, this is 824 it's Matt's X Start, uh, which I've used the Carbon X program on my whole yard, on my yard all year. Great results so far. And uh, this will be the first time this has ever went on my yard. It's high in phosphorus. I want my phosphorus up because it's going to help that, that root system, that turf. 
uh, get going good and get established quickly and get up and going so I can start mowing it so I can start showing you videos of a pretty yard again without all these dead spots in here. All right, so what spreader setting do I use? Well, I don't have a dang clue what spreader setting you use because I don't use your spreader. I got my own one. I know what my setting is because this is a prototype model from Turf where I'm, I'm kind of giving it a test run for them and beating it up a little bit to make sure it's going to be worthy of their standards. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm running on about number four, four and a half, and that's going to put me right about a bag covering 20,000 square feet. Now, if you're unsure of your spreader setting, it is so easy. You weigh out your amount of product that's going to go on your square footage, okay? And then you want to set your spreader setting. This one goes from one to six. I'm going to dial it on back to about a two. Now, I'm going to start making even passes on the yard until I run out of product, okay? That's basically the easiest way to do it. Next time you fertilize, bump it up a notch and do the same process and you you might finish a little bit earlier and sooner or later after you do that four or five or six times on your yard you'll be able to set this thing like I can on setting four and a half go over the yard one time and my hopper's empty does that make sense I got a rookie question for you rookie question rookie what is question it? from a rookie so is it should you go should you put half the fertilizer down going one way and half the other I hear a lot about that so it's even coverage or once you finally figure it out, you can just do it one time around the whole yard, as long as you're covering it. As long, my personal opinion is, as long as you're covering it, it don't matter. You don't have to go cross hitch. It, we don't, we don't do that in our business. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, our machines are calibrated, and we spread the yard pretty much one time, and we're done. And of course, you got to remember, I think in an efficient mind, time is money. Right. Okay. Now, if I were a DIY homeowner and I wanted to go a above and beyond and do everything absolutely spot on perfect to a T, chances are I would crisscross it. I would go over the yard one time this way, go over the yard a second time this way, and have it calibrated to do so that when I get done, I'm empty. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Where'd you get that lawn rebel hat? Oh, Who's he? Huh? Oh, this is my old bud right here, old Connor Ward. Yes, I like Connor. He's a great guy, lawn man. Lawn rebel. It'd be nice to have a hat, Connor. Yeah. I ain't even got a hat, Connor. <laughs> ain't that something? Connor, how come this joker's got a hat and I ain't got a hat, man? <laughs> hey, tell him don't be hating. <laughs> Mama Jamba.
I know it ain't me. It ain't me, Geo. It can't ain't be me. one other person <laughs> in the yard, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Look having at that. About, Look I'm at just, that. I'm used to having about 20 people I can blame it on. Oh, Lord. Look at that right there, boy. Damn. You know how many people look at that yard? You need to take that home as a souvenir, Mike. Look at that hand. Take it and stick it in your yard. <laughs> 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 Good well, I mean, I ain't did too many spots like that. That's filming, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, that'd oh be yeah. Good. That'd be good. People love that. Oh, yeah. I like it. Hey, thank you, sir. Just lay it right there on that trailer. Yeah, you can set it on the trailer. We'll get it. Thank you. That's that pump. I'll show y'all that pump before I leave. Yeah. All right, so this right here is kind of more of a pro tip. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of an aerovator. Totally and completely different machine than this. It's the one that vibrates. You've seen it on the vent track in the grasshopper. And we plug and then come back and aerovate bare dirt. Well, I don't have my aerovator here, okay? So I'm gonna work this ground up with this machine and make it do the same thing as an aerovator so I can get the same result. You see right here, this ground's a little bit hard. It's harder than it typically would be at my house, but this zone has been broken, been busy and I had to replace the head over there, so this zone isn't getting nowhere near the water as that is, and it's okay, we'll fix it right now. But I wanna break this up good. See all these little tiny individual holes? If I were to spread seed on here, that seed is typically gonna work its way into the hole and germinate and come up in the hole. Rarely do you see it come up in between the holes, okay, with a plugger and bare dirt. So I want the whole area loosened up. So I'm gonna take this, work it real good. Then when I seed, I'm gonna put a little extra seed right here. And then we're gonna go back with the weasel, my little garden weasel, and kind of work it in the ground. Look at the difference in that. See how just I spent just a few extra minutes working that over and look how loose an area that is. And that ain't much different than an aerovator. Tammy was telling me when you want a new, a new toy, you have someone else operate the old one and they wreck it and you're like, oh, well, might as well get it. That's the way it works. <laughs> well, what do you want me to beat up? I can yeah. run, run something in the bullet down here. Stay off my Vendrack. <laughs> you don't want to get a new name, nothing better than that, is it? Yeah, stay off my Vendrack. All right, so we have really, really plugged the yard. How many times would you estimate we went over the entire yard? I know me personally, I at least went over it at least 10 times. We went over it and over it. There are gazillions and millions of little tiny holes, two inch plugs in the yard, they're everywhere. Probably the most aggressive I've ever plugged my yard to date. So the reason I was so aggressive is I've got a new grass seed, okay? If you watched the video before, you know, we can't get the original turf type tall fescue varieties anymore. So we had to up the game. Uh, we'll go into detail about that later. But this is next year's fescue bluegrass mix, okay? Brand new variety, a very good variety. And the reason I tore the yard up is I want as much of this to come up as possible. So the more soil I can expose, the more of this I can get to come up. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So that way, next year we can watch the yard and look at it and see how it does with these new varieties in it. Now, I know I said I was going to do a test and not aerate a corner of the yard, <laughs> but that I, I said that before I found out we can't get these new varieties anymore. I mean, the old varieties anymore, right? That makes sense. So, I had to change my game plan. Life happens. The way it is what it is. So now we're going to do that test in the neighbors in the back corner and not aerate over there and just pre-emerge it and look at the weeds next year and blah, blah, blah. Sound fair? Yeah. Sir. Okay. Well, it'll have to be. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't had no other choice. All right. See that teeny, teeny, tiny speck of a seed right there? Mm -hmm. That's the bluegrass, and then right there's the fescue. The, the little teeny, teeny, tiny seeds in there, that's the Kentucky blue. It's about a 15% mix in here. 
The reason I decided to make this blend was to try to darken the yard up a little bit more than it already is. Kentucky bluegrass is a little bit darker grass and also give it a little bit of spreading capability. You know, it, it spreads a little bit, not quite like Bermuda, but it spreads a little bit. And so that way, if the kid's a little rough in the yard one afternoon, playing ball and a little scuff mark, maybe that'll self repair itself with using the bluegrass. Pete, what about my dog's urine spots? You think they'll grow back? Maybe, possibly, a little bit? No. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the dog either, got to go. Either get rid of the dog <laughs> or you got to fix those spots. Okay. So we're going to do this grass seed the same way we do the fertilizer. I'm going to really dial it back. On this machine, it's around setting number two. And I'm, I am going to make multiple passes with the grass seed. I want, I want my coverage to be beyond good. Okay, so I hit every single last little nook and cranny. You'll see me get off the machine and take a little handful of grass and kind of work it on the edge. Because I, one thing, I just got brand new pine needles. I don't want the grass all in the pine needles. So I'm gonna get it as close as I can, but then I'm gonna hand do the rest. Does that make sense? We can use that brand new drop, drop spreader. I could bud, use a brand bud. new drop spreader that my bud, bud brought me, but mm -hmm. it's at the shop. So, and that was my idea to take it out of the truck. Right? Yeah, well, <laughs> sorry. We could have used it. <laughs> oh well. Maybe next time. Maybe next. Now if you'll notice this machine's got a little size on it, okay? So what I did is I rounded this corner off because I just this is a tight Michael. That was Gio. That Michael. Was Gio ain't even been in the backyard. <laughs> See, I knew he wasn't gonna see you back here, brother. Right, we'll get that up. I'm messing with you, you know, I'm making this funny. I don't care. I ain't never been to that. I, don't, I ain't getting in no tight corner like that now. I ain't that crazy. All right, so I rounded this off with my pattern. I've got me a couple of handfuls. And I'm gonna clean up this area right here to where my machine, it's a little bit big for a machine. If you got a smaller spreader, obviously you can. Uh, you can put it in these areas, but this, this is a pretty good sized machine right here. Uh, Mike, look in the back bed of that pickup truck and grab that uh, weasel. All right, so now I've come to a bare spot and the rate that I'm seeding my yard with all the grass in it is not the same rate as I'm gonna seed a bare spot. It takes more grass seed in bare dirt to make it come up and look like the rest of the yard. So I'm gonna take a minute, get off. I'm gonna just kind of give me a good little coat here. Now, one of the hardest things to do is show somebody or tell somebody what 10 pounds per thousand looks like. Cause that's about what I'm seeding this dirt at. But I've been doing it so long, I can kind of look at it and tell you what that looks like. We'll show you what that looks like. And that's pretty much about right. Now see my edge right here? I don't have a drop spreader, so I'm gonna get right here and I'm gonna tighten that edge up right here like that. I don't wanna get much in my beds. Of course, I might get a little bit here and there, but I got a good backpack sprayer that'll take care of that. All right, Mike, work that in the ground right there. And we're not trying to go super deep. We're just kind of mixing it in the top half inch or so, half to quarter inch of, of ground. And if you'll notice what this is also doing is, is leveling it back out. That's why I took that machine and really roughed this up good is so that it would be easy to work. Ain't nothing like trying to rake in hard ground, you know? Really want to work that edge right there. There you go. Look at that. Like you've done that before. You got a weasel, brother. You got a weasel. Ain't nothing like a weasel. The best tool they created right here. Oh, boy. Oh, we're going over. No. Now look. <laughs> look right here now. I'm going to pick at you a little bit. But make sure you get them edges good. Get your edges right. Get your edges right. 
Make sure you work that a little bit right there and you are good to go. Now that looks really good. It'll be compacting my feet down with them boots now. Now I don't have to do anything else to that spot right there other than make sure it stays wet. Or moist, excuse me. We'll talk about that later. Alright, now look right here. Here's a great spot. I'm, I'm somewhat of an anal perfectionist when it comes to my yard. See this one little piece of grass right here? My plugger really couldn't hit it. I'm going to get down here and I'm going to put me a little bit of seed right there. And I'm going to take that weasel. And it's Ain't done. Good. And now what I'm doing, I'm inspecting that. You see right here on this very little edge, I've got two grass seeds. I've actually got one Kentucky Blue and one tall fescue right there on that edge. So when that plant comes up and matures, it'll fill this out and that'll be lush like the rest of it. This ain't Mike. I'll get that broken head, brother. Have you seen that yet? When do we come around this next corner? nervous to let me do this now. Woo! I'm off that stinky cover all this, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I see why you fit me good. <laughs> good Lord. Get your bear spots right. Get your bear spots right. But it did level it out. Remember how they looked before? Yeah. This right here, this little strip, there's no freaking way I can get that machine in here. Now I tried to show Paul this the other day and the way I spray it is I'm kind of grinding my hands together as it's coming out and do like that. That way it's nice and even. more time Pete. Just want to make sure before I... You don't blame me for the bad spot. <laughs> spots. I like how you're going at uh, the perimeter first. Get the edges right. You better get them right. I can't believe how well it's leveling it out. Huh? I can't believe how well it's leveling it oh, out. Oh, yeah, absolutely it levels it out. Yeah, I don't know if that filet mignon to cover all this now. It's <laughs> lost. <laughs> now you know the government working. We don't work this hard. Welcome to my world. Look at this here, brother. <laughs> Good Lord. I haven't sweated. I haven't sweated. Woo! <laughs> I ain't sweating this hard in 10 years. <laughs> Welcome get, to my world. Get some more handfuls, Mike. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's how that's done. Yeah. Now you see why when on my pine needle videos, when I do my pine needle edges, I'll take a sharp, or not a sharp, but I'll take a shovel or something or a spade and tamp that edge right there. And see, that's how I get that good clean lines, that separation between the two. The guys that put these pine needles in, they didn't tamp them. So of course I'll have to go back and tamp all this. But I don't think that's part of their service. Now, Mike, I didn't rough this one up near as bad, so you're going to have to step up the game right here. I fed you pretty good last night, 
So, uh, matter of fact, how was that steak? I tell you, uh, she ain't no Giovanni steak, but she was good. <laughs> <laughs> Gio! Actually, it's, uh, probably the best steak I ever had, and I've had some good steaks. Yes, I, need, I need to come get me a Geo steak. I've yes, had, sir. I've, I've never ate a Geo steak. I was only kidding. I've had <laughs> aged beef in Japan, and that was probably better than that. So, whoop, whoop. I'll tell you what it is. It's that carry gold butter. Carry gold butter, brother. <laughs> gold I'm telling butter. you, ain't nothing like it. Hashtag. Yeah, now you got to work on this. I got you, you brother. That. Break that ground up now. I don't know. You've been government job for a while. No, oh, and I'm going to get your feet off the desk. <laughs> Come on. Feet off the desk, brother. <laughs> Easy, man. Don't throw the seed all in my bed. Wow. Hard, not fast, man. Look at that. Boy, that's good right there. I absolutely, I don't know how long I've been using a weasel. I picked one up at Lowe's or Walmart or somewhere years ago. And it has been one of my favorite tools to keep around the house the whole time. I just absolutely love it. Now that spot right there is really good. I tell you what, if you're not on Instagram, get you an Instagram account and go to at GCI Turf Services. That's my Instagram thing. And I show like little pictures of this as it's happening, you know, as it's germinating and coming up. So you can check that out there. Geo, I got a spot right here. I'm gonna show you. Now that's not damage from the aerator. The aerator. That's not damage from turning around on the mower. That's not disease. That's not dog urine. That's not grub worms. That's not anything in the world that you would think it. What do you think that might be? Take a wild guess. I got three kids. Soccer. No, we don't play soccer, but we do play baseball and softball. Oh, they're she'll, digging there. She'll set her net up yep. right there, and she'll hit. And this is where she pivots on her back Pick foot to drive, and that's what that is. So I'm going to put me a little extra seed in that spot and be done with it. Now, this is just kind of my systematic brain working is all it is, a little OCD. But I will edge out everything with the seed and get all my edges really good and tight. And then I'll slide over just a little bit and go back again. So I'm kind of on the inside of my edge. So all this is done. From here to here is done. And now I can make straight passes. And when I turn around, I don't have, I'll cut my hopper off. And I don't have to worry about trying to get it right up on the edge as I'm trying to turn around. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. You, brother. Here you go, Mike. <laughs> Woo! Don't be hating. All right, so just got my it's aerated, got my grass seed down. Now I need to blow my property clean meaning the driveway, get off any mess I got on it, and the roadside especially. Now, I intentionally threw a little bit of extra seed out in the road, so when I blow it back, I'm just gonna easily tuck it against that edge. Get your edges right, right? Put a little extra seed on the edge, and it'll get a little thicker. So no matter how hard you work, no matter what you do, no matter how much money you spend, no matter how much effort you put into it, if you don't put that stuff right there on your grass seed, chances are it ain't coming up. So I see why I see why it takes so long to edit a video because you gotta kind of watch the whole daggone thing over to see what you want to keep. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then you cut it out one time and I go back through, cut out the junk again. You get it shorter. And then when I get it finished, I watch it one last time and say, all right, that looks good. And then you have to load it to YouTube. Yep. And then you have to do all this, the filming. And yeah. Heck, I've had help today. Yeah. Usually I do all this myself. Yeah, with a selfie stick. <laughs> it is a lot of dang work, I'm telling you.
So I get asked all the time, how much should I water my grass? Well, it's kind of like that, that setting on your spreader. I don't know how much you water your grass. I don't know your temperature. I don't know your soil condition. I don't know any of that stuff. Keep it simple. Keep the seed moist. Now, the way I do that is I'll, we're getting ready to head to uh, town to the barbecue place and, and eat some lunch. I'm going to see these guys back to the home. And I'm going to set all the zones to run 30 minutes. Just get it good and wet, good soaking wet. And then I'm going to run mine about three times a day, seven, eight, nine minutes a time. I'll do that for about a week. And now the whole week, I'm going to monitor it. I'm going to come out here during that whole time. I'm going to come out here and just as I'm going into the house or whatever, I'm going to feel of that dirt and see if it's moist. If it looks dry and feels dry, guess what? That means it's dry. You need to up your water a little bit. But if it's moist feeling, I'm gonna stick with that schedule and keep on going. When I get germination, things start coming up. I'll re re reduce my frequency per day. Like I'll go from maybe three times to two times and maybe increase the minutes a little bit. And then the next week, one time a day. Then the next week, four days a week, the next week, three days a week, and just kind of gradually back off the water. Just like I'm pumping up for seeding, I'll gradually go back down into the fall. All right, so real recap of the day, aerating and seeding. Uh, we put down a starter fertilizer. We aerated the yard very aggressively. Uh, put down 50 pounds of my uh, fescue bluegrass mix, the 2020 mix. And I put in yeah, 50 pounds on 17,000 square feet. And then we, you know, weaseled in our little spots and fixed them up and we're watering. And now we can sit back and relax. I won't mow again. It might be three weeks from now before I mow. Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna cut my grass at four, four and a quarter, I'm gonna probably let it get up around five inches or so before I start mowing. Uh, chances are with me, I'll probably push mow it the first couple of times just to be easy on the new grass. Then I'll go back to the walk behind. You won't see the right ZK anymore this year. It's just, it's a heavier mower. And I just done all this work in my yard. I just don't want a heavy mower in my yard. Makes sense. It is what it is. So the way I kind of worked up to this is I started mowing, you know, I cut four and a half all summer. And I started two weeks ago, got it down to four. Got it down to three and three quarter. Three and a half. Three and a quarter. Last night was three and a quarter when we mowed it. Today when I mowed it, it was three inches. Mm. Um, so I went from four and a half to three in a matter of two, two and a half weeks or so. And I didn't want to cut it down all at one time. I don't want to stress the grass out or nothing. So I kind of gradually took it down. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I took it down that low, I typically don't. Usually I'll go four and a half to three and a half. Air ain't see three and a half. But I went a little bit lower. I'm a busy dude. I need a little extra time. You see what I'm saying? Before I get back out here and have to mow and be real peculiar and all that. So we're busy at work. So that's why I took it a little down a little bit lower. Simply a personal preference. And uh, well, plus you got irrigation too, right? You can keep it moist. I got irrigation now, so I can keep it watered. So a little bit shorter ain't gonna hurt a thing. Uh, chances are I'll probably cut it at four the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So I'll let it get four and a half or five inches and then have at it. So, Mr. Geo. Thank you very much, sir. Absolutely, my pleasure yes, to meet you, man. Mike, again. <laughs> these are my buddies. These are my friends. They're welcome here anytime, and they know that. And uh, thank you for saying that about my steak. I know you're lying on to everybody. <laughs> Best steak in town. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I ain't lying. So anyway, uh, like, subscribe, and share. Now, there's a starter fertilizer guide. It's free in the description. You can check it out. See what you think about it, and then. Um, be looking uh, at the yard all year next year and you'll get to see that brand new bluegrass that's in the yard super good for heat tolerance really good stuff and uh, so are the other varieties in the fescue we'll talk about that later um you got anything you'll say yeah yeah i got something what whatever you do you gotta get your dirt right <laughs> just get your dirt right get your dirt right baby boom check you later Y'all crazy. That's how you do it, brother. <laughs> but it ain't back there I for like, nothing. I like how you're getting mad. Yeah, I do have something to say. <laughs>